at Girls Inc., we work with girls to push past serious barriers, gender, economic, social barriers. Hello, hi, Reza. Um, uh, and grow up, as we like to say, strong, smart, and bold. And each of the Girls Inc. girls, in their own way, is pushing past those bar barriers. But when you read the brilliant book that Julian wrote about the alpha women, uh, I might, might call you alpha women, uh, and the alpha girls book, you see those same enormous barriers, but at a whole other level that they push through to be strong, smart, and bold. Uh, and I started asking, you know, what, where are all the women in these really key industries that are shaping the future? And I wanted to look at a place where um, either in startups or in engineering or in the world of entrepreneurship, venture capital, where there were women and see what it was like for them to be in this really important uh, industry that does help shape the future. And so I looked at the statistics first. They looked daunting. 94% of all investing partners at venture firms at the time I started my reporting uh, were men. But that made me think, well, there are those women, that 6%, who are there. And who are they? And how did they do these remarkable things? So I cast a wide net and started interviewing women entrepreneurs, women founders, and then the women funders. And I zeroed in again on venture capital as this area I think that is little understood, but that is really, really important, again, in shaping how we all live, whether with the technology we use or the medical devices we, we may one day rely on. And they showed me this kind of new definition to success, and that is that you can increment your way to success. Sometimes you have to navigate before you can pioneer, and these women navigated brilliantly. My name is Ashley, I'm 16 years old, and I attend Central Park East High School. Um, speaking in a room full of people is really scary. I would know this because for several years, I was silent in the classroom, I was silent with my friends, and most importantly, I was silent with my family. Um, my insecurities and fears related to an incident when I was a young girl that took a toll on my schoolwork. When I didn't understand a topic in math or science classes, I kept silent, just in case I accidentally said something wrong that reinforced what I saw as my, as my worthlessness because of what happened. Of course, my grades slipped. When I got to high school, I attended my first girls in class. It wasn't long before I felt accepted and safe, despite my desire to stay separate from the other girls. The girls in classroom was a safe, a safe space where everyone could honestly discuss anything affecting them. In that room, I learned about resisting stereotypes, how the media influences us, positive body image, and so much more. My life is very different now. As a member of Girls Inc., I am much more outgoing, open to taking risks, accepting my failures, and making friends. I speak up in class now, even volunteering to read out loud and give speeches. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Josephine. I'm 16, and I go to the Academy of Finance and Enterprise. Before I was introduced to Girls Inc., I was very lost within myself. I didn't really know what my purpose or my worth was. My parents often argued. I have a younger brother, and I, ha and I always had to make sure I was strong for him, but in turn, I had no one that was willing to be strong for me. I wasn't getting the attention or guidance I longed for, so I focused on getting attention from boys. I knew that wasn't the answer, but I didn't know what else to do. My, teachers, my teacher noticed that I wasn't myself and talked to me about Girls, Inc. I was a little apprehensive to attend at first because I didn't know what the program consisted of or what I would be doing, but I took a, feat of, a leap of faith and joined. Girls Inc. turned my life around completely, and I'm really grateful. It opened my eyes to the strong, smart, and bold young woman that I am. Girls Inc. assured me that I'm not alone and I'm worth a lot, and that I don't need boys or anyone else to make me feel worthy. Girls Inc. also taught me I could be a leader. I found my purpose and my goal in life, and that is to guide girls, young girls like myself to be on the right path. 
and remind them that they are special, beautiful, and worth a lot as well. I want girls to rise together to crush the double standards that we can't do what boys can, because we can do it just the same or even better. Julian, tell us a bit about Alpha Girls. That that was fantastic. Thank you so much for that. I have talked um, quite a bit already about Alpha Girls. You're all getting a copy. Um, but I find that these stories of these particular women who succeeded in a male-dominated industry kind of transcend place and time. I hope their stories are relatable to women and girls coming up who feel like they're the underdogs and feel like maybe that you don't fit in? Hi, I'm Teresa. Um, so maybe I'll start with why I agreed to uh, let Julian <laughs> interview me to be part of this book, because as Julian knows, and I know many of the other alpha girls feel the same way, Julian's very persistent. I said no um, <laughs> many, many times. Um, but I think what Julian just said is what convinced me to to be part of it was one was I was able to sort of read some of the other things that Julian had done and it was very um, very interesting and warm but very factual and true to life of other business figures and I think she really wanted to um, paint a story of uh, successes things that are not what you see if you watch HBO Silicon Valley or if you read other things that that's a small part of Silicon Valley but it can be a great place for four women who came from the outside uh, and for anybody who perceives themselves as an outsider. So many great stories. Thank you. Um, one thing I loved about Julian's approach to the book that got me interested was she didn't just try to pick four interesting people but she she wanted to pick people who, you, when you looked at their records, um, what did they do? What did they, did they, what companies did they start that really influenced the infrastructure of Silicon Valley? And I thought this is a great place to start for introducing women uh, into, this, um, into this arena and getting us better known because it's so substantial. You know, what did they do? What companies did they start? And so that's really what hooked me. You wouldn't believe it, but I got a job in venture capital. And, and I had no doubt whatsoever that I was not going to get one of those jobs because I believed in myself and I believed I could do it. And I don't have an engineering degree. I have never run a company. I have almost zero operating experience, although I did work um, for Symantec. So I do not have the typical background of a venture capitalist yet. I have backed some of the most important companies of our time and um, have won Investor of the Year Award with my firm. You know, I've, I've done very, very well in picking companies like McAfee and Acme Packet and F5 um, without having the right background. And so I hope that some of the beautiful, smart, brilliant Girls Inc. girls who see this will say, I want to be a venture capitalist because let me tell you, if I can be one, Anybody can be one. Adversity, um, I faced a lot of it as a kid. And I always tried to understand, why don't they want to play with me? What do I have to do to make them play with me? Um, so trying to understand, where is the adversity coming from? What's the reason? And how can I turn it around? Can I turn it around? If I can't turn it around, maybe I'd walk away myself. But usually, I could figure out how to turn it around. Um, my favorite example is I usually would um, get cast out when I was playing on the streets because people would find out my name or they'd find out what primary school I went to, which is a very difficult Armenian name, Armenian Catholic primary school, and they'd walk away from me and they wouldn't want to play. And I'd think, okay, this game requires really fast running, or this game requires really good swimming, or this, these kids, actually, I can bring new toys and share with them because I've got these different toys. And um, so I always had to figure out early on in my life, where's the adversity coming from and how do I win over? So that training, you know, five, six, seven years old, really paid off in my life because I didn't get discouraged when I faced it. I just had to think really hard 
and go to the source and see if I could actually, you know, win people over. I think about overcoming adversity, for me, I always think about it as a challenge. And um, I really, really like to not lose. <laughs> um, so, so, for example, when my best friend and I, who happens to also be female, um, when we were in college in engineering, uh, taking engineering classes, and none of the, n which like 90 plus percent were men, none of them would let us be in their study groups because they thought we were going to drag down their scores. By the way, my best friend, who also happens to be female, is an engineering professor at MIT and broke the curve on every test. So that was a big mistake on the guy's part. <laughs> but lucky for me, lucky for me, because I did not do so well mm -hmm. freshman year. So I guess I just always took it as almost like a challenge. Like, so when someone says you can't play with them or you can't be in their group, or instead of being like, oh, why am I being singled out? I sort of took it as like a challenge. Like I wanted to prove them wrong. And then the second part, which actually also speaks to Sangeeta and speaks to, that's my best friend, and also Girls Inc is find, find, your, your, find your people who are going to be on your team with you, right? Life is a team sport, uh, and it's certainly there have been some great women colleagues, and but also men. Um, in the book, there are several stories for all of us. Uh, you talked about Reed, Dennis, right? Like, so um, I think, I hope this book speaks to not just alpha girls and alpha women, but to all people who um, see that, uh, by banding together and working together on things that we agree are important, that we love. That's the other thing is, and it's Sonia and all the others have talked about. If you really like doing something and you feel like it's making a difference and there's purpose to it, you won't see obstacles as, as adversity. You'll see them as like, again, someone challenging you to like prove them wrong. Um, so persist, love what you do, and work really, really hard. That would, that's the advice that I would give. Get an A in attitude and an F in victim. So when, when even something horrible happens to you and you really are the victim, just don't feel like it. Make sure you don't feel like it. Have the attitude that can propel yourself, can you, you can propel yourself out of it. So that's one. The other one is perfection is your enemy. Okay? We waste so much time, so much energy trying to be perfect. 80% is good enough. That additional 20% is going to take twice as long, three times as long, and you'll probably never attain it. So perfection is your enemy. Well, I don't know if it says something about me, but two of the things I was going to say were already said by the other you ladies. <laughs> Yeah, it was just what I was gonna say is I to my younger self I would have learned that I would have spent a lot I would have spent a lot less time worrying about being perfect. Those were actually <laughs> gonna be my words. I spent less time worrying about being perfect and more time um, enjoying the journey and uh, in and thinking about what's possible and worry more about what you can do to make things better for yourself and the people around you, even if it's not perfect. Again, you saw here these great um, ideas that are contrasting, right, but very complementary. And that's one of the things that each woman brings to this story is a different background, a different approach, um, a different way of dealing with adversity that um, I've learned so much from. I would just add one thing, and that goes back to what I said about writing, and that is find something you love and don't let it go and trust your instincts if you want to get into criminal justice or w whatever it is that you feel most strongly about and that feels right to you and that you enjoy doing and that you are challenged by. Um, go for that and don't let go of that. Because what you're doing and having your own passion for it and your own goals um, is really, really key to being happy and finding success at the same time.